But now let's talk about um, a story that's going to get increasingly serious over the next few weeks. LGBT plus campaigner Peter Tuchel has been released, having been arrested in Qatar for protesting the Gulf state's stance on gay rights. The officials denied there was an arrest and there has been some growing concern over the safety of those from the LGBTQ plus community should they wish to travel there for the World Cup. Well, joining us now is Jane Ozan, founder of the UK's Ban Conversion Therapy Coalition and friend of Peter Tatchell. Thank you very much for your time. Have you spoken to Peter and do you know how he's doing? I'm afraid I haven't been able to speak to Peter. His phone isn't on. I know he's uh, been on a flight to Australia. Uh, I understand he has been released and that he is well. So that is the good news. But I haven't been able to speak to him yet, sadly. Uh, what we're hearing from the Qataris is that he wasn't actually arrested. Um, he was asked, uh, they asked someone to move on uh, and claims of an arrest were completely false. Well, <laughs> you just need to go and listen to Peter's own statement that says that he and a friend were taken. They were interrogated for 49 minutes and then released. And uh, as usual, it's one word against another, but you can see um, the security guards approaching them if you look at the video that they were able to capture. You know, Peter is a seasoned, brave campaigner. He does this on purpose to show the truth about what happens to people who stand up against regimes like Qatar and, and in his case, just hold a, a placard saying that LGBT people are, are, are subjected to conversion practices. And he knows that he was one of the lucky ones. He was released without any uh, physical uh, damage after 49 minutes. But others are not so lucky. They can spend years in jail and even, uh, sadly, face the death penalty. And that's why we need to be so concerned about Qatar's uh, human rights record particularly with regards to LGBT people, but also with regard to migrant wake workers and to women, sadly. Peter is trying to make a point, and he is, as you've said there, being deliberately provocative to try, to try and make a statement. Are you nervous of what might happen in the next couple of months? Yes, I am. I mean, we've seen flip-flopping from the Qataris as to how they are likely to treat LGBT fans and, you know, whether people like myself can travel safely and be ourselves, whether we can hold uh, rainbow flags or not. But to be fair to Peter, that's not his primary concern. His concern is the, uh, um, the LGBT community in Qatar, um, their lives, their silent um, persecution. You know, there's a conversion therapy uh, centre right next to the Wafik um, centre, right next to the, the stadium where the World Cup final will be held. That is still open and people are still being put through tortuous um, practices there. That's what we need to be most concerned about, as well as obviously ourselves and indeed players who may uh, want to show their support for the LGBT people. It, what happens if they wear rainbow laces or a rainbow armband, which I very much hope they will? How will they be treated? So, you know, FIFA knew when they uh, appointed uh, CASA that there was uh, real concerns over human rights. There were pledges made uh, for changes to be made which have not been realised. And we are as concerned as we've ever been about uh, the lives of innocent people just for being who, who we are. Yeah, really good to get your thoughts this morning. Thank you so much, Jane. Jane Ozan there, founder of uh, the UK's Banned Conversion Therapy Coalition, and I believe uh, we have a statement from the FA. Yeah, we asked if uh, someone would come and speak to us. They said no one was available. Uh, they've said for more than a year... They've been in dialogue with numerous human rights organisations, trade unions, non-governmental organisations to prepare for Qatar 2022 in order, they say, to get a balanced understanding of the key issues in the country and the wider region. And then they've gone on to say, while understanding there's still progress to be made in many areas domestically, the goal has been to learn how to best use our position as a national football and governing body while ensuring the well-being of England plans, players and the support team. One of the big questions is, uh, do we believe that they're doing that? Are they using their position to ensure uh, the well-being of fans, players and the support team? Yeah.